Yeah, and I'm blessing the Lord, brother. Get on in the house. He's probably down to the liquor store last night. He ain't no count no ways. Mm. Them kids in trouble every time you turn around. Live on the street amongst all these heathen. But I guess I'm blessed of the Lord. I'm just blessed. Well, hello there. Hey, Joe, how you doing? Yeah, how's Martha? Yeah. Yeah, I know. She ain't doing no good neither. I don't know, Joe. I tell you, I, I don't know. If, I don't think there's no better force to y'all. Well, y'all have a good day. Just remember, we're blessed of the Lord. Lord, there's Mildred. I wonder what she wants. Gosh. Hello, Mildred. Oh, honey, yeah. Never slept a wink up all night. About to die. I tell you, just about to die. But we're blessed of the Lord. Yeah, we're just blessed of the Lord. Yeah, I know, Mildred. I know. Say, what? What did that preacher do? You are kidding me. Well, I, I can't say I'm surprised. <coughs> Ain't nothing much of a bunch down what that church does that surprises me no more. <laughs> Maybe one of these days it'll get better, but yeah, I know. We're blessed of the Lord. Yeah, I know. We just have to make the best of what we can do. Yeah, I know, Mildred. Yeah. Well, you know, most of them ain't much, but I mean, you know, what, do you, what are you going to do nowadays? I mean, you know. I know hypocrites, Lord, hypocrites everywhere you look. Yeah, I know. But Mildred, I guess we're blessed of the Lord. I, I guess we are. I mean, you know, it ain't. Ha, ha, by the way, how in the world is James doing? Is that so? Mildred, he's going to die. You know he ain't going to make it. <laughs> Well, I know he's on the prayer chain, and I've been praying, but he ain't going to make it. I don't even know why we're praying about it, Mildred. It'd just be good if God had just gone ahead and take him. You know what? That'd be the better for the thing. I know. I know. You know, you just pray and pray and pray, and sometimes it don't do a bit of good. But we're blessed of the Lord, you know. We're just... You just got to make the better of it, Mildred, and go on. That's all I know. I know. They done what? <laughs> they spent that money down there at that church on what? <laughs> you got to be kidding me, Mildred. Well, I tell you right now, I don't pay my tithes for that mess. <laughs> Trying to get a bunch of kids in, uh, having a Winnie roast. Now, ain't that something big? <laughs> I know, Mildred, I know. Been going there 57 years, I know. But maybe it'll change one of these days. I know, I know. But you know, we're blessed of the Lord, you know. We're still just blessed of the Lord. It don't make no difference, you know. I know. It, it really stinks. It does. It just does. Lord, girl, I've been up all night. I ain't slept a wink. Feel like you're about to die. And I've been in 10 prayer lines. <laughs> Pair of prayer cloth in my shoe. But I still ain't getting no better. But I guess I'm blessed of the Lord, you know. Oh, I'm sitting there on the porch watching these no-count neighbors. <laughs> Carry on sometimes like a bunch of hyenas or something. But I guess I'm blessed of the Lord. And I even got a roof over my head, you know, and place to lay down at night. Yeah, I know, I know. It's just awful. Awful, yeah. Yeah, I guess I will go to church tonight. I, yeah, I've been studying on it. and I don't feel like it, and I don't really feel like I get nothing out of the service in no ways. But, but I, yeah, I guess I'll go. You know, it is church night. and You, you know, if we ain't there, it seems like nobody can't figure nothing out. You know, if me and you ain't there, Mildred. <laughs> We got to be there and, you know, kind of keep the show a rolling. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't.
don't feel like going. Neither probably ain't going to get nothing out of it, but let's get ready and go on, you know. Yeah, I know they look for us and everything. Well, Mildred, I'm going to hang up and get on now. If I can get up out of this chair off this porch, I tell you. I've got some things I need to do today, and I think as soon as Days of Our Lives goes off, I'm going to spend some time in prayer and everything. And uh, See, I usually pray between Days of Our Lives and Judge Judy. You know, that's usually, yeah, that's when I try to get my prayer time in and, and everything. And Yeah. Well, I know, Mildred, but you pray anyways. Whether you see anything or not, you still just keep on praying and trusting. You know, maybe God will... God will have mercy on us. I don't know. Well, honey, you have a good day. Yeah. Yeah. If James, now, when James dies, you be sure to let me know, okay? Because I'm going to fix a covered dish and take it over there. Yeah, I expect he'll go any day now. Yeah, I'd say he will. I, I, I just don't think the Lord's going to do nothing. I don't think he's going to heal him. He's just going to just let him go on. But let me know now because I want to fix some, some hash brown casserole and take over to the family, you know. Yeah, yes. If I'm able. Now, I mean, man, I've been so down in my back, but I'm going to see what I can do, Mildred, because, yeah, I know in spite of this rotten Awful thing that we live with. I tell you what, we're blessed of the Lord. Well, you have a good day now, honey. Yes, ma'am. Bye. Y'all ain't never been preached to in a house cult before, have you? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't, Holbrook was here before we come, so I don't know. I have. You're blessed. You're blessed of the Lord, brother. <laughs> now I know that was kind of a funny little thing, but and I pray to my goodness that none of y'all don't do that. But ain't that how some people live their lives? Amen. Ain't that how they live their lives? Not one good thing. Not one positive thing. Not one praise for God. Not one positive thing. You know, no faith. But yet they're blessed of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we've been studying the last few weeks on the Beatitudes, blessed are. And we talked about blessed means happy, right? Happy, content. I want y'all to, if you would like to, turn in your Bible tonight. And we're going to go over to Proverbs. We're going to go to chapter 18. And I kind of want to finish this off tonight with this thought. How many of you all know that words are power? Amen. Amen. Words can be a powerful thing. A word can heal, and a word can cut you to the quick, can it? I mean, a word can take and just rip your heart almost right out of your chest. Amen. But let's go to Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. And I want you all to meditate on this scripture tonight. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, as funny as she was, Sister Blessed of the Lord was kind of talking out of both sides of her mouth, wasn't she? She was coming off with all this old sour, you know, this ain't no better, that ain't no better, ain't never going to get no better. But then she'd turn around and say, I'm blessed of the Lord. See, folks, we got to be so careful with what we say. Do you realize that you can absolutely stop up the will of God and prevent your blessing But what comes out of this right here? What did God tell Moses to do when the children of Israel needed water? What did he tell them to do? He told him to speak to the rock. There's power in a word. And I feel like today, just listening to conversations, I, I'm a people watcher. I, I'm the type of person, now Mark could never do this. He's got to go buy something. 
I could go to Fayette Mall tomorrow, get me a Diet Coke and a thing of popcorn, and I could sit down and watch people all day long. Because people fascinate me. I just absolutely love to watch them. I could sit there all day. I like to hear little tidbits, you know, of the conversation of what they're talking about and this and that. Not to, you know, you're eavesdropping, but people sit down around you and they're talking. But stop and think. What do we talk about? What are we listening to? What are we feeding into us and what's coming back out of us? Folks, our words are so, so, so important. Yeah, true. And I think as God's people, God expects us to speak faith. As a parent, what if your child came up to you when they were little or even when they were grown and pretty much let you know, I have no faith in you, I have no confidence in you, you've never been what I needed you to be, you've never, you know, you let me down. Man, as a parent, that'd be devastating, wouldn't it? I mean, mine's grown and long grown and gone. But man, that'd break my heart even today. But folks, when we start complaining, and I don't think sometimes as human beings we forget the importance of this, of our words, and complaining and murmuring and griping, and you know, and I know how it feels to not want to get out of the bed. I'm right there with y'all. You know, I know how it feels when the knees hurt and the hip hurts and the back hurts and this hurts and that hurts. I, I know, you know, a little bit about some of that stuff. I'm starting to get there. You know, I've hit the golden years a little bit. I'm finding a lot of rust on them like some of y'all have. But, but see, when we start complaining and murmuring, and I'll just come right and say it, playing out griping, how do you think that makes God feel? Do you realize that when we are complaining about our lives, <clears throat> that we are basically telling God, I don't like the way you're taking care of me. Mm, yes. mm -hmm. Good thought. You're not doing a good job. You know, I don't like, and it, as human beings, don't get me wrong, none of us have perfected this. And we probably won't perfect it until the day God calls us home or he comes back and gets us. But we can do so much with this little bitty tool right here in our mouth. What's it say in the book of James? No man can tame the tongue. But when we start filling our days with griping, complaining, murmuring, gossip. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have somebody tell you? Well, now, I'm not trying to gossip, but I just want you to know how to pray about this. Yeah. And before they're done telling you how to pray about it, they've told you every detail down to the last mm, of what's going on, stuff you didn't even know. They couldn't just say, hey, you need to pray for, for John. they got to tell you all about John's life and what's going on and how John maybe, you know, might have faltered a little bit or something, and they found some fault in him. But, folks, we've got to be so careful. Because we are literally speaking life or death to ourselves with our words. <coughs> Do you know that you could talk yourself into being in a bad mood? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Do you ever just get up of a morning and you don't even know why and you just feel sour? It's like, whoa. And if you keep cultivating that, Instead of rebuking it and putting it in its place where it belongs, before you know it, Debbie, you can have the rottenest day that ever was. Because, see, you can make, I think, with the power of your words, I think you can almost cause things to, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I had a relative in my family that used to say, <clears throat> well, if you don't expect anything, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> well, that might be true, but you're not going to be blessed either if you're not expecting anything. Amen. If you're not expecting anything good to happen, nine times out of ten, it probably won't. And I think sometimes we can speak, talks about death and life, we can literally even speak 
death or life into our own bodies. Did you ever get up and you're going about your day and you're sitting on top of the world and you run into probably one of these sister blessed of the Lord's or they can be blessed brothers too, brother blessed of the Lord. And they say, you feel all right? You don't look good. Well, I thought I felt okay. You know, am I fever? You know, you better, you better lay down. You don't look good. And see, before you know it, we can convince ourselves, well, maybe something's wrong. I might better make a doctor's appointment. Now, see, when you got up that morning and left the house, you spilled on top of your A game. But see, somebody planted that seed, and the words of your mouth cultivated it. That's right. And before you know it, you're at the doctor's office. <clears throat> and then we all know what happens. You know, your HMO, it kicks in, then it kicks out, and then you left with a copay, and... <laughs> Nine times out of ten, you're going to end up at the drugstore and all that. So you just really, you're going to have a good day then, ain't you? Yeah, but, but see, life and death. Dealing with kids all day, and we have to take a lot of, and I'm glad we do, really. We have to take a lot of classes and seminars and stuff like that. And uh, it's teaching you how to watch out for things in kids, you know, to watch out for children that, Maybe there's some, you know, some problems and there's some stuff going on. And even over our own children, our own lives, our own spouses, we can speak death. A lot of the kids that get on the bus, they tell us that you are the first friendly face that they've come in contact with that morning. A lot of them, and I've had, them, I've had it happen to me. I know Genevieve has in the past and when she was driving. They get on the bus and them little cheeks is just tears streak, you know, and they're broken hearted because they was some big carrying on at the house that morning before they ever even come out. And I've heard people, and this just chills me to the bone, I've heard people even speak death over their own children. <coughs> you ain't never going to amount to nothing. You ain't no count. You ain't never going to do nothing. See, folks, there's two words in the Christian vocabulary that we really need to be careful how we use them. Never and always. You're never going to do that right. You're never going to get healed. It's never going to get any better. Or it's always going to be this way. It's never going to work out. See, folks, we've got to be careful because words are such a powerful thing. And if we want to live the blessed life that Jesus laid out before us in the Beatitudes, the blesseds, we can't do it if we don't get this right here under control and get it sanctified. And I've been guilty of saying this myself. Did you ever say something you say just off the top of your head? You said it before you thought. And we all do that. That's a human thing, isn't it? But we've got to get this tongue. And that, see, there's three places that you got to work on this. It's got to come out of here. Then it goes up here. Then it comes out that. Now, Mark always says with me, between that and that, there's no filter. He said, there's supposed to be a filter in there. You don't have one. He said, it's missing. It's either missing or clogged. Probably clogged. Uh, probably clogged. And I've tried to do better. I have. I've tried to do better since I've got older. But in the things of God, folks, we've got to be careful. We've got to bring the words of our mouth under subjection. We can't just be out here speaking just all kinds of idle, you know, this and that and others. And like I said with Sister Blessed of the Lord down here, oh, she is funny. She is good for a laugh. But think on the serious side of that. Do we ever, well, I pray none of us are like this, but do we ever allow ourselves to sound like a Sister Blessed of the Lord? See, folks, it all can't, it, what does it say in the Bible? It says sweet water and bitter can't come out of the same fountain, don't it? 
we cannot be griping and murmuring and complaining over everything that comes our way. And then in the next breath, well, I'm blessed of the Lord. Honey, you killed your blessing. You killed your blessing before you ever got started. We can literally kill the blessings of God Amen. with the words of our mouth. What you speak out and what you expect, you know what I told you a minute ago? Well, if I don't expect nothing, I won't be disappointed. Well, if you don't expect anything, that's probably what you're going to get. What does the word say? The word says to come with faith. And folks, we have got to learn in our everyday life to speak faith. And you might have to speak faith in some very dire situations. Very dire situations. Now, am I saying you're going to walk around, you know, just like some little giddy, you know? No. Mm -hmm. But you can still speak faith over our lives. We can speak faith over our children. I've heard people say, well, I don't guess my child's ever going to get saved. Folks, don't say that. My boy's going to get saved one of these days. He is going to get saved one of these days. I'm having faith that you all have, that's got lost children, they're going to get saved. Julie, i got faith that your husband is going to be saved. Amen. Gina, i got faith for your family. And you have got to learn, folks. It's not just, you know, you, you go through life, and I think sometimes as Christians we have to be careful because we get into this, well, I'm walking by faith. Well, that sounds pretty. You know, it sounds pretty spiritual. But are we? Are we walking in faith? Are we? Are the words of our mouth speaking faith over the situations in our lives? See, folks, the thing we got to realize one thing, and bad things come. Yes, I am, I am in no wise telling you that bad things don't come because they do. But even in the bad times, we can speak faith. Amen. God gives us that grace. He gives us faith. What does the Bible say? We'll go from faith to faith. If you meet a new situation tomorrow that you've never met in your life, God is already there. Yes. And he's already given you the faith and he's already given you the grace to overcome that situation. But we've got to be so careful about our words. If someone that you know that's not a Christian, and maybe you work with them every day, I don't know, maybe they're in your family, maybe, you know, a neighbor, you know, somebody you come in contact with fairly regularly, and all they're going to know about the Lord is what they hear you speak. How's that going to be? Are they going to hear us griping and complaining and murmuring like Sister Blessed of the Lord? Folks, as Christians and as God's people, we can't talk out of, I always heard it called talking out of both sides of your mouth. We can't do that. We cannot, I never, I never enjoyed in my life being around a wishy-washy person. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. They can't make up their mind one day. They're here one day. They're there one day. They're out one day. They're in. I'd rather somebody just lay it out on the line to me. I, I mean, you know, just make it plain. But don't be, well, you know. Hmm. Folks, with our walk with God, we have got to get our speech under subjection and under the spirit of the Lord because see we're not going to have all those blessings it's impossible if we don't let the spirit of God come alive in us folks I'm going to tell you something you cannot do the beatitudes on your own you cannot do it you're not going to be a peacemaker if you don't have the spirit of God in you nine times out of ten you're liable to start three wars in a day's time if you don't have the Spirit of God dwelling within you. But if we do not get our pattern of speech 
under control, and under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. There's no way in this world that we're going to be blessed. We're just not going to be. We'll speak a curse on our own life. Ain't that what Sister Blessed of the Lord done? Didn't she say, it's I'm all, I don't even know why I pray. Who was it? Joe, George, whoever she was talking about. He was going to die. James. 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 I had Joe, George, James, I had them all running. But Joe was going to die, wasn't he? Well, no need even praying for him. He's going to die. See? Now, how much faith is that? I don't want Sister Blessed of the Lord praying for me. I think I'll go find somebody else. But, folks, think about it. As, 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 and I tried to make it funny. Y'all know the kind of person I am. I tried to make that funny. But I wanted to get a point across to you all, too. We can't live both ways. It won't work. You can't be blessed of the Lord and talking about your neighbors, gossiping about your preacher, gossiping about your church, not having no faith. What she said, I've been in 10 prayer lines and I ain't no better. And uh, her prayer time was between days of our lives and Judge Judy. That's enough to keep you right there. <laughs> Folks, you got to get it. If we don't get it, we won't get it. You get what I'm saying? We have got to line our lives up with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I think personally, one of the hardest parts of our body that we'll ever get saved is probably the tongue. There was a preacher Mark was listening to one time and he... Uh, he said a woman come to him and said, Brother Dwight, I need to lay my tongue on the altar. And he said, I thought to myself, Sister, I hope it's long enough. <laughs> not the not the tongue, uh, the altar, but was the altar long enough for the tongue was what he was saying. But folks, I want to live a blessed life, don't you? And I'll tell you something, and, and I guess it comes maybe with getting a little bit of age on you. And uh, some things has happened this year in our lives and it's it's changed my outlook on a whole lot of things but folks we have no time to waste we have no time to waste jesus is getting ready to come amen and he's getting ready to come quick and instead of being sister blessed of the lord we need to be out here proclaiming the gospel of christ yes. and letting them see that we're living what we're talking about amen and I hope you all have got something out of these lessons on the Beatitude. I told Mark I felt kind of kind of bad because the Beatitude is pretty practical. I mean, y'all heard it preached on and read it and know it for years. But I don't know. Maybe sometimes it's good we get a little refresher course. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Did you ever have God to have to remind you of something? He's, he's had to do it with me a couple times. I'm like, no, wait a minute, you know. Let, let me take you back and remind you of such and this and that. And folks, we are blessed of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Blessed beyond measure. Yes. But let's speak and live like we are. Yes. Here you go, brother.